Hi Sarah, welcome to the 3Generate TV studio. It's great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Why do you tell us a little bit about what you do? Um, I do a thing called craftivism, which is activism through craft, as in needlework. And I work with charities and galleries and people around the world to do slow, gentle activism. Tell me how craftivism started. Um, for me, it started because I was a professional campaigner and pers in my personal life I was as well. But a lot of the quick, angry activism I didn't think was very effective. And also it didn't really fit in with my faith in terms of respecting people, you know, being a gentle, loving person. I felt like it was not really what my faith was rooted in. And I saw that craft could slow me down, help me think more. It could be a lovely gift to encourage people rather than scream at them. So I merged the two together and I, I Googled craft and activism, found this word, but there wasn't any projects or groups I could join. So I contacted the lady and said, could I maybe come up with someone use that word? And she said, anyone can use it. So um, I started doing it on my own. And That's then exciting. over the years, people around the world wanted to join in. So, so craftivism looks like what for those well, for who aren't crafty? Well, I think it's a bit like the word punk. There's right. loads of different bands under that banner that all sound different. And the way I do it is to do slow, gentle, joyful activism. So you slow down because it's repetitive hand actions. Right. So it forces you to slow down and think more deeply about what to do rather than just getting angry and lash out. It helps you think more deeply about the complexities of injustice while you're stitching. Mm. And there's lots of evidence from neuroscientists about this that I've got to work with, which is fascinating. Um, and then also it's a gentle form. So it's about encouraging people, whether it's giving them a handkerchief to say, don't blow it, use your power for good and build relationships with them. If they're politicians or teachers or journalists, or it might be something you make for yourself as a physical reminder. A um, real mix. Yeah, a lot going on there. So you're here at 3Gen this week. What are you doing yeah. here at 3Gen this week? Loads. <laughs> I'm doing, Excellent. I'm doing five workshops um, of four different projects. So some looking holistically about how we can all be change makers one stitch at a time. Some more specific on climate change or um, we've got other ones on building relationships with politicians. So really different ones to get people to see the strengths of doing craftivism. And if people are watching this and think, oh, I'm really into craft and would like to become an activist or... Like, how do they, what's some of the projects you've done, I guess, past yeah. and what are some of the things you do moving forward? Well, the first thing is you don't have to love craft to do it. I learned from YouTube, and if I can do it, anyone can craft. It's all really straightforward. Right. If you love craft, you can embellish it with loads of stuff, but you don't have to have, ne you don't have, to have ever done craft. Um, some of them are more holistic about how you can be a good global citizen and a good Christian, Others are more specific, like on um, Fashion Week in London, we make mini protest banners, which are this big, and we hang them up with street art around local unethical shops. Or we shop drop instead of shoplift, you shop drop little mini scrolls that you've made. We've got mini solidarity bunting for really little kids to do with their parents. So they're all on our online shop as kits that anyone can get. And they're all made as ethically as possible, of course. Excellent. How do you find out and um, more about craftivism. You go on www.craftivist-collective.com and everything should be there. And if it's not, you send me an email and I point you in the right direction. That's really exciting. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me.